Welcome to Bespoke Diaries, today's article is on, Fearless, by Shan Li, owner, motivational speaker, author, Shan Li Publications, South Africa. Irrespective of your race, country, upbringing or culture we can all take a moment to close our eyes and reflect upon the very same feelings that just so happen to be innate in us. Feelings Li Shan Thu aka, Shan Li, has no doubt you will agree to be profoundly true. As a child, we desperately wished to be an adult but the moment we were adults, we once more yearned to be a child. Carefree, passionate, filled with desires and beliefs that as we age, society seems to rob us of, but why and how? It simply isn't possible? Words one hears uttered all too often. But what is it about a society that makes an individual believe these words to be unquestionably true? Finances and responsibility no doubt spring to mind, but by being responsible to yourself first, will you not inevitably find quick and effective solutions to the barriers your adulthood has presented you with? Whatever happened to those childhood dreams and aspirations? Find that child within you, that passionate soul, burning as strongly as the sun. Aspirations growing higher with each day's rising sun. That child you once still lived inside you, ready to burst out, ready to climb the highest mountain and swim the deepest sea. As Lee looks up at the night sky it gives her a sensation of mystery and wonders hundreds of years before the first spacecraft landed on the surface of the moon. Traveling to the moon was something so many young minds passionately believed possible. Their adult parents, their water sprinklers turned on, dampening their prospective dreams, with sentiments of their idiosyncrasies. But one little child refused to conform, as odd as his peers may have found him to be. He continued to believe and lo and behold the impossible became possible and in his journey, he found that he was not alone in choosing to be different and rightly so, for we shall forever remember the names of the first two men who accomplished their dream of landing on the moon and in doing so, the dream of mankind. Was Lee one of those children, filled with dreams? Most definitely. For the top student at her school, winning regional and provincial accolades was nothing new. But at the age of 12, her fire wasn't put out with just a bucket of water, instead, she has been hit by a tsunami. In a mere second, her life changed. She has her first epileptic attack and discovered she had a brain tumor. Rejection, which she had only known to be a word in the dictionary, now controlled her every waking moment. She was alive, but not living. Members of the community came home daily to pass their condolences. Shame, she is disabled. She will never marry. No man will ever love her. She was going to be a doctor and now she will be nothing more than a teacher. Until the age of 18 she was in and out of hospital, picking up a rare allergic reaction known as Stephen Johnson's syndrome. She lay on her deathbed three times. Time passed and in her early 20s she made a full recovery. But nothing changed in the minds of society. Lee was still disabled. Marriage proposals came by the dozens, but all for the younger girls of the family. She is the sick one they would say. Her brain doesn't work properly. She would want to scream but she had to politely smile and show her respect to her Hindu elders. With the expectations of society, she made it her goal to marry and so to everyone's utter shock she did. Her marriage and her attempt to conform to society failed within a few months. No surprise. Was the reaction from society. Lee needed to get away. Be alone. Find her true self. Figure out what would make her happy and being almost 30, she rented a cabin in the KwaZulu Natal Midlands for a few weeks. It was the most beautiful place she had ever been to. She loved horses and as she gazed at them in admiration, the stable boy offered to let her ride them and for the first time she heard the child in her screaming out, jump on. And so she did. She felt fearless and unstoppable and after years of trying to fit into the expectations of society, she finally realized what it felt like to stand out. Lee remembered the dreams and beliefs she had as a child. She had the same body. She had the same mind. She was that same child and nothing was impossible. As the horse dutifully obeyed her, she realized she was in control. 
not just of the horse but of her own destiny. It was on that reclusive trip away from society that she began to pen her emotions, crying for hours as she did so. Rather than an autobiography, she embedded her emotional tale in the journeys of the three separate characters. It was as she wrote this novel that she realized, it was not just her story that she wished to share with the world but South Africa's story, a story of a beautiful land once torn apart by segregation, yes, but land that now lay healing in unity, gaining in strength with each passing day. Lee's message of delivering hope through her fiction became her goal, but would the world be bothered to listen? It truly did not matter. Living as if she has been suffocating inside one of the Earth's crevices, she finally decided to breathe. She no longer had the fear to try. She pulled herself out. With her newfound courage and belief that her greatest of ambitions could be achieved, the novel that she had poured her heart and soul onto and so passionately written, would go on to gain international recognition in the International Saba Book Award for self-published authors which took place in the United Kingdom. Released on the 20th of September 2020, the novel she had titled To Be Love Leo was recently named the number three fiction bestseller in May 2022 at Santon City's exclusive books in South Africa. Lee became determined to make a positive difference in people's lives and spread my message of hope. Radio producer and presenter, Dr. Clint LeBruins, having heard of her struggle offered her a slot as a radio presenter on Radio al Ansar, an opportunity that she would never have foreseen, but one that she now realizes was made possible through her determination to help others. Motivational speaking soon began to play an enormous role in enabling her to spread her message and she spoke for many international platforms, amongst them, just to name a few were the global millennial groups, unheard voices, Hus Take Lock and the Wellness Lifestyle Conference. As a motivational speaker, her primary focus became mental health and how to overcome depression and deal with disability. Her story and some of the strategies that worked best were what she wished to share with the world. In her seventh year of teaching, she soon found herself unexpectedly being placed in special needs education, teaching children suffering from severe epilepsy, autism and other cognitive ailments. She spoke to parents stricken with grief and despair daily, counseling them voluntarily. What was disability? Was it not this, ability to be different and what was so wrong with being different? Were not the greatest of inventions discovered by people we know to be different, yet do we not hold them in the greatest esteem? Suddenly her being born with a disability made sense. It was for a purpose. She had grown up wanting to be a doctor, to heal and help. But she realized she still was that child with the same desires and determination. She was healing and helping others, just on a path not quite like the one society would have set up. She had stepped away from society's expectations almost a decade ago but her path was so very much more exciting. She was open to so many more possibilities and all because she had taken the decision to embrace her fears. During Covid she initiated the online talk show Meet the Author that creates a platform for rabid readers to connect and interact with authors, enabling readers to get an insight into the minds of creative geniuses. In August 2021, she founded the Winning Can Talk, uniting creative minds across South Africa Association to stimulate and showcase the talent South African artists have to offer in all spheres of arts and culture. With accomplishing each new task, she only sets with its new goals. In June 2022 she went on to set up Shanley Publications, an affordable and hands-on family-run self-publishing company. Is she married, a mother, a housewife, did she tick any of the boxes her Indian elders expected of her? The answer would be no. Did she fail them? Of course yes. But the real question is, did she fail hers left? Her answer would be a very big no. She couldn't be happier. The truth of the matter is only you and you alone will know what makes you happy. So be that fearless child, not embezzled in disarray when life doesn't quite go according to plan, but ready to take on a new adventure, fearless to the journey that lies ahead. Thank you for your time. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Do leave your thoughts in the comments section below.
For similar type of article please reach us at contact at thebespokediaries.com or you can visit our website www.thebespokediaries.com.